deary me, we seem to have lost Sheridan Birkin. And greetings, and welcome back to the Resident Evil 2 commentary with me, Solidus Scully. And now we get to the point in the game where the plot starts to go into hyperspeed. Again, as I mentioned before, it's usually the police station which seems to be the biggest uh, drag to the game. And I say drag to the game because it's not even really, you know, the biggest drag in like a negative sense. It's kind of perfect because it allows you to get your bearings and get used to the game mechanics in a sort of familiar setting, you know, akin to that of the mansion from Resident Evil 1. But, you know, doing so in a way that feels original and unique. So... It's a drag in the best way possible. But yeah, by the time you get out of the police station, as I mentioned when we were doing Leon scenario, yeah, this is when things begin to get into hyperspeed, and speaking of Leon, we're going to be seeing him again quite, quite soon. And uh, one thing I do want to bring up with this section, this is also another opportunity where you can play as Sherry again, if you are doing the Claire A scenario, and part of the reason why uh, Sherry isn't here at the moment is because, well... In the A scenario, something very, very dark, disturbing, and, uh, well, something that I'm kind of surprised not a lot of people talk about when it comes to Resident Evil 2's story, because it is, uh, it's not graphic, because it does cut away before the, uh, scene happens, but, yeah, it makes, uh, makes playing Resident Evil 2 a little uncomfortable, but I will save that tangent for a little bit later when we meet Sherry again, because, uh, thankfully, nothing bad happens to her in this version. In the meantime, who do we meet? What happened? You're bleeding! I, I... I ran into this woman who is in trouble. Her name's... Ada. Right after that, someone tried to kill me. Nearly succeeded, too. Ada went after the sniper, but... I, I'm worried about her. You gotta find her before... before something happens. But you've been shot. I'll be okay. It's Ada I'm worried about. Yes, Claire. Please ignore my gaping bullet wounds. You gotta save Ada. Meanwhile, I'll just bleed to death. I honestly kind of wish I did a better job to mention it back during Leon's segment, but my god, is he so... He's so... I don't even know how to describe it. He's, he just has... He's thinking that he has a bout with a woman that he barely even knows. And like, I mean, I think... I think Annette, Bur I think Annette Birkin even points it out to him when they meet, because Jesus Christ, Leon, you are... Uh, I don't know what to say, man. You are... You are distracted by the Asian persuasion. And, uh, yeah, get used to that, because there is a hell of a lot of cutscenes in this part, so... Yes, well, we avoid the spiders, which are, you know, dangerous, because they can inflict poison on you. Yeah, just keep on the move. Anyway, who will we meet next in this wonderful adventure? Are you alright? What happened? Get away from me. You just want my husband's G sample, don't you? But no one will take that away from me. No one. Husband? Then you must be Annette. Huh? How did you? We don't have time for that. Sherry is lost somewhere in the sewer system. I have to find her. What? I told her to go to the police building. Why is she here? Now Sherry and the G sample are both in danger. Uh. What did she mean by that? Does Sherry have the G-sample? Okie dokie, Mr. Smokey. Annette Birkin. A very, uh... You know, very interesting p person. You know, good scientific career. Uh, mother of a single child. Uh, wife to Dr. William Birkin. You know, very, ever the responsible one, sending the only child that, you know, she gave life to, to the police station. You know, the one that she does know for a fact is ran by a, uh, a certain police chief who was, uh, not exactly the best around women and children. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, 
as you can quite plainly see, Annette isn't exactly the most stable person around, and, uh, once again, another example of having to use the fucking valve right when you don't think you would need it, but you in fact do, so, yes, two problems for the price of one. This place just gets better and better all the time. Uh, but yeah, I think if there's any sort of criticism that I have with Resident Evil 2 in terms of its story, I think Annette Birkin is probably the primary example of one. I mean, not just for some absolutely shocking examples of parenting, but also for the fact that she seems very... Uh, deluded. Like, I mean, if you'll remember back to Leon's storyline when she was, you know, desperately on the hunt for the G-Virus sample and, you know, defending her husband, even though I think it's quite clear that at this point in time her husband is long gone, as we will in fact see. Uh, just as soon as we find Dr. William B, all ready and transformed by the gangster virus. I still think the biggest defense to her character, though, is her parenting skills, because, I mean, not only does she send her kid throughout a zombie-infested city, but she sends him, you know, she sends Sherry to the police station with Brian Irons, of all people, who was not only pissed over the fact that he's being screwed over, I mean, admittedly, that little kerfuffle is between, you know, Birkin and, uh, Irons, William Birkin, that is, so, uh, so, so either Annette didn't know, but even in that case, like, I mean, considering the sort of, you know, scam that William was trying to pull with Umbrella, you know, considering the fact that Chief Irons could have possibly used Sherry against them to possibly blackmail Umbrella or get a better deal for himself, it just doesn't really make any sense to me as to why, you know, Annette or William wouldn't have kept Sherry close at hand. I mean, I know William was driven by his research, and we really don't get that much in his character until Resident Evil Zero, and even then, that's just for a brief cutscene. Eh, I don't know. It, it all just throws me the wrong way in terms of what, it, what exactly Annette was thinking when doing all this. I mean, I guess you could possibly make the argument that she wasn't thinking, so... Eh, who knows, it's a complete mess, and Annette just makes me very sad. Uh, but yeah, so, in terms of anything else that's happening, like, at this point, Ada should be running about the facility, and this, uh, she's possibly returned to him? I'm not too sure what the timeline is here, because there are a lot of these sorts of puzzles that, again, as you well know, we have solved before, so, uh, whatever, zapping mechanic, I've pointed out all the flaws in the last button, if I do so again, I'll just repeat myself into the brink of insanity. And then we'll get a repeat of what happened during the Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil commentary, which, uh, at this point in time should be over now, so... Yeah, it's gonna be Resident Evil 2 from here on out. Uh, for the rest of the Scully Spookverse 2... Hello there. It's Hunk, and, uh, other soldier who were lying here for some reason. Yeah, as I mentioned before, Hunk isn't actually dead, he's just... unconscious. Um, in fact, I don't know- I don't exactly know in the grand scheme of things when Hunk leaves. I'm guessing possibly before the second half of Resident Evil 3, considering the fact that the police station is full of zombies and he gets his evac chopper out of there, but... Eh, I don't know. Maybe maybe he hitches a ride with Tofu and he eats him because he's mean and scary and a soldier who likes to eat healthily. Yeah, but whatever the case. Uh, I guess I could probably go into detail about mentioning the differences between the a and the B scenario. Again, I mentioned it before in terms of, you know, Sherry Burke and having an extra segment to herself. Uh, but, uh, I can't really speak for Leon specifically because, you know, Leon is obviously... It's actually been a while since I've done the canon scenarios. Because, uh, I mean, I'm pretty much... I did the exact same uh, setup I did for this game that I, uh, that I did with the remake, so I don't exactly know what else I could say there. Although, actually, to go into it as well for the uh, remake's sewer section, it's... I don't want to say it's much more harrowing, it's just a little bit more aggravating because you have a lot of those uh, little slime creatures that come from the uh, the creatures that the G-Virus rejects, like, you know, when Brian Irons died he would have released a, yeah, like a little G-Virus mutant, and as would Ben Bertolucci, and those would be infesting the sewers which inflict a poison status upon you, and, well, I mean, while the sewers are a little bit more labyrinthian uh, than they were before in the original, they are kind of a pain in the ass, which doesn't exactly speak wonders, but no matter, we're through the sewer section and we don't have to face any G-Virus mutations, so now we're recalling the train and heading off to our next and final destination, the lab facility. Uh, which, may I say, it just as a bit of an off-the-cuff remark, I actually kind of prefer the original over the remake because... Eh, I don't know, for the same... For some of the same reasons that I mentioned before, actually, 
a little bit too modern for 1998 standards, but I'll get into that a bit later. Sherry, you're okay. Sherry, did your mom give you something called G-Virus? Either a vial or a test tube? G-Virus? I've never heard of anything like that before. Are you absolutely sure? If you give it to me, I'll hold on to it for safekeeping. But I really don't have anything. It's the truth. Why would her mom say something like that? Hmm, why indeed. That's a nice looking pendant you got there, Sherry. Certainly would be a shame if a plot point was hidden inside there, but I'll say no more, say no more. Hmm, yes, hmm, yes. A fine vintage, a little on the rough side, but not too bad when you down it with a little bit of indignant rage towards a plot point. Hmm? Now we do get one of my favourite themes of the soundtrack. Actually, you know what, again, I said this before in the police station, but the soundtrack as a whole is just... tasty, man. Oh, and uh, by the way, I think I mentioned this pro uh, beforehand as well, but yeah, you can use the flare gun to find out where that key is. Well, not that you really need to. In fact, I think you need the lighter in order to activate it anyways, which I don't think Claire has, because she has a lockpick in place of that, so... Yeah, Claire is truly the master of unlocking. So yeah, I think that might be part of the reason why I got a little bit confused last time when I was describing uh, Claire and Leon in terms of Resident Evil 1 tactics, so I guess it's just the item space thing that was changed. Uh, then again, I haven't really compared movement speeds and um, you know, uh, like how much damage they take, so they might be exactly the same, I'm not too sure. And then again, I don't even know if the costumes themselves actually alter the amount of damage you can take. But again, uh, something to experiment with on a you know, subsequent playthrough, I suppose. This is a new weapon and one exclusive to Claire. I can't remember if, you, if it's just exclusive to the, to the B scenario, but yeah, this is the Spark Shot. A weapon that is okay, but one that I do like because it's, well, lightning, and as anybody would tell you if they've uh, played any Star Wars game like Jedi Outcast, lightning is fucking awesome, so yeah, use it at your discretion. It has a bit of a one-shot boost. There you go. It was used to contain the experiments, and now, well, it gives off a very tasty jolt. Blizzat. Whatever. Uh, the remake actually did something interesting with this weapon in that they changed how you uh, use it. Like, I mean, in this one you just press a button and it shoots out like a bit of a shotgun sort of thing. Well, more of like a direct current charge. Uh, so in that sense the weapon can be pretty easy to use in the original, but in the remake what you do is like you shoot it out and then you like hold it and then it electrocutes the enemy for a brief period of time. Uh, nothing too bad, just uh, strange to use I suppose. Another interesting bit of trivia and something that was actually brought back for the remake was that the spark shot was initially meant to have uh, ammo rounds, which you can find, um, I think, if you hack the game into like a debug mode sort of thing. Uh, but the problem is there was no, you know, item or image coded for it, so it just looks like a bunch of Japanese text. Uh, but the remake did actually give it some ammo, so yay for bringing things back? Question mark. Sherry, wait here. I'm going to check it out by myself. Okay, I'll wait here, but hurry back. Indeed we shall, Miss Sheridan Birkin, right after we have another rousing game of item management. The game. But, uh, yes, more interesting things are here to come, because now we have to recall the train, which I'm guessing Leon and Ada already took down? I'm not really sure how that works. I mean, I, I guess they could have made their way here, but wouldn't they have had to do the valve puzzle, you know, and go through all the stuff that... Ugh, whatever. Zapping mechanic, it'll give you a headache, and... Uh, there actually is a little bit of continuity to this, because, I mean, when you do hop in the train, you will see a, a mark in the wall, which is, you know, the part where Mr. X slashed Ada, so... Yeah. I'm uh, not... No, no, it wasn't Mr. X, it was William Burke, and you silly billy. So, uh, yes, indeed, there is continuity with the zapping mechanic when the game feels like it. So, anyway, now we're going to record the train and bring it back. And speaking of Mr. X, uh, well, I uh, guess we don't have to worry about him. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. But yeah, if you'll remember before, the platform used to be up here. Now we have to go down there and return it to the surface world 
where it can flourish once again, free. <coughs> ah, excuse me, free of any distractions. It's pretty cool though that we do actually get a bit of an extended sequence, and you know, had the zapping mechanic worked as promised, I think seeing more stuff like this actually would have been cool. You know, like, you get to see some different areas that you otherwise wouldn't have seen in the A scenario, which, you know, the game does, and it's something that we will actually be seeing in a little bit, because, uh, yeah, let's just say Claire won't be seeing the same stuff Leon sees. That just wasn't very nice. Now we're gonna have to pay for a new television. Uh, but yes, it's time to take on Mr. X once again. Get out your acid rounds, or your incendiary rounds. You'll be able to tell when the music stops. Uh, oh, this might be the end for Claire Redfield. Oh, don't I go. What? Uh, Mr. Echoes, you are nothing compared to the power of the grenade launcher. Oh well, at least he can have a nice little rest. This isn't going to stop him from following us though, because he seems to be compelled to do that for some reason. I'm kind of... I'm, I might have to research the backstory again, but... Is Mr. X's job just to clear out any survivors in the police station, and... I guess possibly to get rid of the police chief? Because, I mean, I, I don't exactly see why Umbrella would send in uh, Mr. X to take care of any STARS members, because that's what Nemesis was doing, so... Uh, who knows, really. Maybe Mr. X was just there to... I don't know, I mean, it doesn't exactly explain why she was, why he was going after Claire, so I guess maybe he was just there to clear out any survivors who could possibly give dirt on Umbrella? Well, I mean, not that it would really matter anyway, because Umbrella's stocks would ultimately do them in by Resident Evil 4, so... Who knows? Maybe Mr. X could have died. Okay, Sherry, let's go. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about staying silent for this, but... Fuck, the cutscene's short anyway, so... Bugger it. I really do love that theme, though. Uh, there's also something about the sound mixing in the Dreamcast version that just strikes me the wrong way. Like, I mean, compared to the PS1 version, or maybe it's just my uh, sound configuration, actually. I might have to check that, actually, because I've noticed in some parts that the sound comes out a little bit... Uh, jaggy? I don't know, maybe it's my... Maybe it's my audio settings, maybe it's my cables getting old, but... Yeah. Oh shit! Oh, somebody did something here! Savage, bring out the air horn. Whatever, fuck it. Oh, but yeah, Resident Evil 2's soundtrack is fucking amazing, and especially in this portion of the game, it's good. Just like the 90s FMV CG cutscenes. Oh, it is so tasty and delicious. I know there is a reason why FMV cutscenes became less used, but uh, I do kind of miss this era in gaming because it made these cutscenes look so damn special. Uh, an era that's long gone, I'm afraid. So, who's ready for another family reunion between Sherry Birkin and her dear father, Mr. William Birkin Esquire? I know I am, and if you could see just on the wall, uh, right beside where Sherry was standing, yeah, that was where Ada was sitting when she was slashed by Mr. Billy B. Billy Bop Bippity Bop Bippity Boppity Boo. And yeah, much like beforehand, you can't go back inside, so we'll uh, stock up an ammo, get some health items, and uh, well, just be prepared because. Yeah, this face of William Birkin is nothing to scoff at, especially by comparison to his previous form, which was quite pitiful. But now he's all powerful, as you will soon see. Right now, as he will Spider-Man down the walls. Oh no, he does. Oh, I'm thinking of the other thing. Never mind. Oh, Claire, just seeing you makes me want to transform and get a bit of a open chest mouth thing. Fucking brutal, man. But yeah, then again, uh, same strategy as what you fought against with Leon applies. Run around the arena, uh, use flame rounds because that's actually very efficient against the G virus mutations. And uh, yeah, avoid his slashes because now that he has like four claws, he will 
waste no time in trying to slash you down, and he will jump over the train, so doing the ring around the rosy strategy, well, can be useful if you keep on the move, but uh, yeah, don't sit still like a lemon. Just keep firing. Yeah, there is also a... I'm not really sure if I'm going to have much time to talk about it in this part, or I might do afterwards. Whatever. Actually, no, I will have time to talk about it, because we have a lengthy section that's kind of boring after this, to make up for the advancements in the storyline that we're seeing right here. But anyway, Birkin has been taken care of for the time being, so let's have a nice little heart-to-heart -heart chat with one Sherry Birkin. Isn't this... That's okay. You keep it. I'm sure it'll keep you safe. Wait here for me, okay? I'm going back to look for your mom. Thanks, Claire. Even though I'm an only child, neither of my parents ever spent much time with me because of their work. But now that you're with me, I finally have someone to rely upon. Sherry... Aw, oh, isn't that sweet? I guess this technically means that Claire was Sherry's true mom all along. In like a spiritual joiny sort of thing. It just makes the Italian Mafia hot all the more sweet. But yeah, since the train has stopped, we now have to get that train moving again. And that of course means that for as little time that we have to spend with Sherry, it is now gone. And how tragic that indeed is, after having spent such a sisterly sort of bond together, which I think was really what the game was trying to do all along. They actually do double time on that in the remake, actually, with, um, uh, Sherry and Claire just sort of bonding together. Well, uh, not necessarily in the sense that they had the... Because, I mean, I think they have the same equal sort of amount of moments that they have in the original. I think the difference here is that... Uh, I guess, well, mainly with the fact that the remake probably has the addition of being set in 2019... Well, Said in 2019, you know, when we have, like, English translators and adaptational stuff that makes it a lot easier to get things across to a Western audience than it would have been in 1998. Like, they went, like, really full ball on it, especially during the ending when you can see uh, Leon, Claire, and Sherry just skipping off into the distance and talking about having a puppy or something. I don't know. It was adorable, but I'll cover that when I cover the remake in, like, ten years or so. It's... well, that'll be a fucking long way away. 2029. In fact, even if I'm not making videos anymore, if I decide to suddenly die, I will come back from the grave, and even if YouTube doesn't even exist, or if it's changed, or it's become shit, I will return to, for the Resident Evil 2 remake commentary, when nobody will probably fucking care. Ah, <sighs> the things that I do on time delay release in a paradox. But yeah, this was what I was talking about beforehand with the, uh, one of the more boring segments, block pushing. Now, unlike a game like, say, Catherine, where block pushing is interesting and you can, you know, move blocks around and form structures and, you know, solve puzzles, here we're just solving, uh, pushing it around in a very Resident Evil 1 sort of environment, like, right at the very end, in the basement of the lab of the mansion. Uh, indeed, it's fun times a go-go, so uh, there is one thing that I did want to talk about, and part of the reason why I was kind of uncomfortable about doing Claire A, Leon B, is that, uh, again, and while that is the canon scenario, yeah, when Sherry falls into the sewers, like right what happened at the beginning of the part, yeah, Dr. William Birkin finds her, and, uh, well, considering the nature of the G-Virus mutation is the desire to breed, yeah, it only works with family members. He found his daughter lying in a very compromising position, yeah, not too difficult to see what Billy Birkin does there, and well, yeah, Sherry becomes infested with a parasite that is growing within her, and then there's this whole little subplot about trying to find a cure for it. Again, none of this shows up in the Claire uh, B scenario, so yeah, you're not really going to be worrying about that too much, even though, you know, William Birkin is starting to become more of a persistent threat at this point. But yeah, that's a, mm, a spicy meatball and very uncomfortable to talk about, so that's kind of why I prefer... Uh, Leon A. Claire B. So, yeah. Again, the remake kind of sidesteps this because it does have the whole, like, Sherry is infected, oh no sort of plot. I guess possibly because Resident Evil 6 happened. And, uh, like, I mean, even at that point, I don't, I don't think Res- uh, To my memory, I don't think Resident Evil 6 covers across the whole, uh, 
like, the vaccine, which you have to make for Sherry using a bunch of different chemicals and shit. Uh, if it does, I'm possibly misremembering, because I'm pretty sure I lost my copy of Resident Evil 6 somewhere. I think I might still have it. Then again, it could have been one of the many games I traded, and have sort of regretted ever since. Like, Silent Hill Origins, that was pretty much the last time I traded with anybody, and, uh, haven't forgiven them since, so, fuck it. Yeah, it's been a while. I, I might be able to- I might possibly be able to find another copy of Six. It's probably going really cheaply for, like, the PS3 or whatever at this day and age, but... Who knows? Take this! Ugh, liquors. You ain't shit! Especially now that we have a grenade launcher. Eh, but alas. So I suppose in terms of any other differences to really point out... Eh... None, really. I'm pretty sure you do also do a lot of the same stuff as Leon in the uh, B scenario, but I can't quite remember. Again, it has been ages, and when I played the Resident Evil 2 remake, I did the same stuff I did here, as I mentioned beforehand, so... Yeah, I think it might be worth giving this game another shot, or another playthrough, at some point in the future, just to see the differences again. Or I guess look it up on YouTube, that works as well. The thing of it is, is that, and again, one of the interesting things about Resident Evil 2, which I... Uh, I kind of like about the game, but... Uh, I don't know, it's one of those games that you can play over and over again, it's just still so very... Uh, interesting when you see all the details change and everything, because... You know, it, when you're trying to understand the story, it can lead to you getting a little bit lost if you remember certain playthroughs more than others, which is probably part of the reason why I'm kind of confused between... Uh, the, what happens in the A scenario compared to the B scenario. There we go. Uh, that's not really any slate against the game, though. That's just more of an observation about myself and how scatterbrained I am. And on that note, we will see you next time in Resident Evil 2, where we finally make it inside the lab. Catch you later.